to clinch the Southern Conference regular season championship, the first ever for East Tennessee State in the Southern Conference coach. And we have the guys behind us a little bit of a different format to celebrate the championship. And while we give you a, a closer look at this handsome team, coaches, players, managers, and trainers, uh, Coach, we'll let you talk about them. They weren't all bad this year, were they? They certainly weren't, <laughs> uh, and they showed that last night. Uh, we didn't have one of our better shooting nights, but we uh, we did what we had to do to win. It was a gutty performance, and, and the entire year, these guys uh, have just done a great job, and we, the coaching staff, are very, very proud of them, as I know the fans are. We've said this a lot, and I know with Coach Young and Peterson and Coach LaForce in the background would be just as proud as you are. I hear a lot of times about this team, not only how good they are on the court, but they're nice guys off the court. Well, they're fun to be with and uh, travel with, and we just have a great time. We really do. It's a good atmosphere, and, and we are like a family. And we're glad to have them with us here today. We're going to talk to a couple of them. We wish we could talk to everybody, but time constraints forbid that. We'll start with uh, the senior on the team, Chad Keller. And, Chad, uh, you had the best perspective of anybody to enjoy this championship, starting off with about a team that suffered through the 20-some losses, and now you're on the first-ever championship team. What a turnaround, huh? Definitely. Uh, this team's came a long way, but uh, I think it can be attributed to the coaching staff. They got in some great players, and, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of this team. These guys are a great bunch of guys, and I think the reason we are so successful is we get along as well as we do, and, uh, you know, I'm just happy and thankful to, to be a part of it. Well, you're modest, and you should take a lot of the credit because you went from a role of being one of the leading scorers to now the team's leading rebounder and performing in a difficult role, coming off the bench, which is sometimes hard to do. Well, basketball, you know, it's it's a game of roles, and, it, and a team that's going to win, teams, uh, players have to know their roles. And uh, I've accepted my role, and, and we're winning, and, you know, as long as we're winning, we've got to be doing something right. So, you know, I accept my role, and I just do what I have to do for us to win, and, you know, hopefully we can keep it going. If you'll pass the mic down to Greg Dennis, we're sort of going informally here through uh, some of the team players. Uh, Chad, of course, uh, the leading rebounder, and Greg Dennis, the leading scorer. And last night, another outstanding game against Marshall. By now, most folks know you come from Charleston, Greg, but you really do get pumped up for what would have been your hometown team. Yeah, that, that makes the, uh, the win even more gratifying last night is the fact that he did come against Marshall, you know, close to my hometown, and everybody in Charleston and Huntington got to see it on television. And I was happy to have a good performance, and that was how we came out with the win. Your mom, a regular uh, visitor at East Tennessee State to watch you play, but last night snowed in. Did you get to watch her on television? Yes, they, I talked to her after the game, but everybody, the whole family got together, and they watched the game on TV last night. They couldn't make it down because uh, of the weather, but uh, they said they watched it on TV, and it was a great game, and everybody was real excited. Greg Dennis, one of the legitimate uh, contenders for Southern Conference Player of the Year, and I'm going to get him to pass the microphone to another legitimate contender. Uh, it would be tough for me to pick, or anybody, I think, between these two guys. Mr. Jennings, the point guard for the Buccaneers, and you're part of that class of 91 that helped turn things around at the core of the team. Uh, now that you've set these uh, historic things, attendance, and also, uh, of course, the first regular season championship, can you tell what that means? You still have a year to go yet, but uh, you've already accomplished quite a lot. Yeah, it's a, it's a great feeling, you know. We still have one more year, and, you know, still got a lot of more games to play this year. So, you know, hopefully we can keep winning a long time. As Mr. points out, the season's not yet over. We'll talk more about the games coming up. But Mr. also happens to be the focus of this week's player profile. We'll introduce you to a different Buccaneer individual each week. This week, meet Keith, Mr. Jennings. You've heard people say big things sometimes come in small packages. Keith Mr. Jennings personifies that expression perfectly. The 5-foot, 7-inch point guard from Culpeper, Virginia, directs the ETSU attack. And size isn't an issue with Mr. I think I just ignore size altogether. Because, you know, I started playing at a young age, and naturally I was always shorter than two, so it really doesn't bother me now because, you know, my brothers are short and we play together all the time, and I find it tougher playing against my brothers than I do some other guards that I play against in college, so... I think it's to my advantage to be shorter because it's harder for somebody taller to guard me. And it's really kind of hard for me to guard somebody that's taller than me, but, you know, it's, it's easier for me than it is for them. Some observers think Mister is the most important player on this Buccaneer squad. However, he disagrees. I put a lot of pressure on myself to, you know, that I feel that, you know, the team's going to play good whether I'm in there or not. But, you know, most likely I like to be in there when the team's playing good, so... I've tried to stay out of foul trouble. I haven't had that luck lately. You know, I've been getting in foul trouble and sitting a lot, sitting down a lot in the first half. So, you know, I think the team feels, you know, a little bit com more comfortable when I'm in the game. And, you know, I like being in the game as much as possible. But, you know, fouls are another thing. Once you get in foul trouble, there's nothing you can do. And I feel that they pull together when I am in foul trouble. They proved it last year. You know, I wasn't playing against Wake Forest, and you know, they went out and played a great game. You know, I was, I played a little bit, but. 
still, Alvin did a great job, and Major did a great job. They handled the ball well. So, you know, I know that they can play without me, but, you know, I just like to be in there helping them too as much as possible. A point guard in basketball is like a quarterback in football. He shoulders much of the responsibility for the Bucks' on-court performance. The main one is to try to keep the intensity up on the team, you know, to try to get the team ready for every game, because I feel that if I come out ready to play every game, that, you know, they're going to be ready to play too, because if I'm playing good, you know, they're going to get to the open spots, and, you know, they're going to do things to try to make themselves better too. So as far as leadership, I think that's about the main one, and, you know, just trying to keep everybody up. You know, if you get your shot blocked or you turn the ball over, just, you know, don't worry about it, because we put a lot of points on the board, so it's, you're going to get a chance to make it up sooner or later. Everyone likes to shoot, you know, unfortunately there's not enough balls for everybody to come down and shoot the ball every time they come to court. But so I say the passing, you know, because the passing gets the crowd into it, you know, whether it be Major or Greg or Calvin or Alvin hitting a three or the alley-oop to Marty and Calvin and Greg. I think either one of them gets the crowd going and once the crowd gets into the game, it gives you, they get you to play above what you usually play. So I think the pass really sets the tone of how the game is going on. I was a scorer in high school. I averaged maybe 25 points a game because, you know, I was used to shooting the ball a lot. So it, it, it helps me in college, even though I'm a point guard and used to passing the ball more. If, you know, if they're going to play tight on major and sag back in on Greg and going to let me shoot the three, you know, I'll be most happy to shoot the three, you know, because I'm used to doing it. So I'm used to scoring, but, you know, like like you said, on any given night, you know, Calvin, Greg, and Major and Al, all of them are going to get a lot of points and you're not, you're not going to need me to score. If Mr. Jennings has his way, his basketball career won't end at ETSU. He dreams of a shot at the pros, and with each year, his chances improve. I'd always imitate the bigger to the greater players, the players I admire, and you know, always think, you know, one day, hopefully, I could be in the NBA. I've talked a little with Coach Robinson, and he feels that I'm capable of playing there. You know, we've talked about the other little men that are in the NBA, and you know, we feel that they have some qualities over me, but I have some over them, too, so. Hopefully, as long as the team keeps winning and, you know, more people get a look at us, I feel my chances are getting better. When Mr. isn't playing basketball, he still likes to watch it. And if a game isn't on television, well, he'll just hook up the Nintendo. With still one year remaining, Mr. Jennings has accomplished so much, individually and with the team. But there's still one goal he would like to fulfill. Dunk won during a game at Memorial Center, and he's working on it. It's crossed my mind, because... I've dunked in practice, you know, on an alley-oop, but, you know, my hands are so small that I can't really palm the ball, so but you never know. Maybe I can catch one coming off the rim one day. I think that'll surprise everybody in the dome. Might have some people faint. Coach, members of the media have a, a different problem. The ballots are out for the All-Southern Conference team and also the Player of the Year in between Greg and Mr., and, of course, you have to consider John Taft. Really a tough decision. Well, it is, and we just leave that up to the media and, and <laughs> concern ourselves with winning games. We'll talk about winning some of those basketball games with highlights of the victory over Drake and the big one over Marshall when we have more of the Les Robinson Show.